What's up guys, Garrett here, back at you guys again with another video. I've just been here in my shop processing products all day long. Thought, hey, I need to get a YouTube video out, so I thought, if you guys didn't see from the title already, 10 items I've sold on Amazon within the recent, you know, 30 to 60 days. Um, you know, I know people like seeing what I sell, what other people sell, so I thought it would be a pretty fun video for you guys. And I try to pick just kind of random everyday items that, you know, I know you see on social media a lot of just generic, regular stuff people sell, and I kind of wanted to pick some just random products that you might not even think of selling, tell you guys kind of where I got them, how much I got them for, um, I'll put up how much I sold them for, the profit, all that stuff on the screen so you guys know. Um, and yeah, guys, let's just get right into it. So I've been venturing off quite a bit from retail arbitrage, more into just fully private label and wholesale, but I still go out, you know, one day a week or so, do some retail arbitrage for fun. So all these products I'm gonna be showing you in this video were sourced via retail arbitrage. And if you don't know what that is, that is going to, you know, stores in your local area, like Walmart, Target, grocery stores, things of that nature buying products, selling them online for a profit. So all the products you're gonna see here today are products I have picked up locally at random stores and I'll let you guys know which ones those are. So to start off, I sold this video game called A Killer Instinct. It's for the Xbox One. Um, I sourced this at Walmart for about $15 and sold it for $55.96. I sold about three or four of these. Um, so pretty good profits, probably about $20 profit made. I'll let you guys know on the screen how much profit there is. But sourced for $15, sold for $55, definitely a great find. Um, you know, there's definitely different times of the year. Walmart tends to mark down certain categories of items. Um, and recently I've been finding a lot of video games. So definitely go check out your local Walmart, see if they got any video games on clearance, and be sure to look out for the killer instinct. Next item is yet another Xbox One video game called Wreckfest. Um, I think I sourced this for $10, sold it for $33.96. I sold about four or five of these also. Um, so maybe, you know, $10, $12, $13, $14 profit. Not a huge amount of money, but again, a great sale over 100% ROI. Um, and it was quick seller. They all sold within a few days of getting to the Amazon FBA warehouse. Next product is going to be a beauty product. It is called the Garnier Whole Blends Shampoo with coconut water and vanilla milk. I sourced these for $3.99 at Ross and sold them for around $14 to $15. So again, only making like four or five bucks profit. Um, but it's just everyday items like this sell really well. And if you guys didn't know, there's like a lot of shampoos, beauty products at places like Walmart, Target, Ross, that they get over and over again, and you can buy them at full price and sell them for a profit. I know it sounds crazy, um, but there's definitely a ton of replenishables out there in like the shampoo, conditioner, beauty product categories, especially at Target and Walmart. So if you wanna find replens, definitely go to your local Walmart's targets or just get like a tactical arbitrage, go online and start doing some sourcing and you will find, you'll find full price replenishables that you can keep ordering or purchasing over and over again. But this specific shampoo was sourced at Roth. I think I sold about 10 of them. Um, again, super quick seller. I love selling shampoo, hair products like that. Um, but again, guys, not a lot of profit, but hey, it was just a pretty cool little item. Next item I sourced at Burlington Coat Factory for $22, and it is called the Mega Constructs American Girl Leah's 2-in-1 Rainforest Sanctuary Construction Set. Um, I've sold a ton of Mega Constructs. I always find them at places like Ross. Uh, Ross, Burlington, TJ Maxx, Marshalls, I find a ton of mega constructs. Um, so definitely check to see if you guys are ungated in that brand and go check your local. You'll, you'll be finding it year round. There's a bunch, they do Pokemon, um, American Girl, all these different little kid toy brands they do kind of collabs with. And they're really great sellers and a lot of times you can make some good profit. I sold 12 of these. Um, so I was only making like a $15 profit, so about a 70% return on investment, uh, but I was able to pick up 12 at one location, so you know, not a bad $200 profit-ish, 150, 200 bucks profit the past, you know, 30, 60 days on that one product. Next product is kind of interesting. It is a hand soap. Yes, hand soap sells really well on Amazon. You can find 
really kind of like higher end hand soap, I guess. Uh, when I get hand soap, I just get the 99 cent ones from Walmart, the generic. Um, but people pay a lot of money for these like super fancy high end shampoos. And the one I sold here was sourced at Marshall's. It is called Michael Design Works Foaming Hand Soap. Um, I paid $2.99 for this at Marshall's. I picked up about six or seven of them and I sold them all for $15 to $16. Again, only making, you know, five, six bucks profit. Um, but they sell very quickly. Um, I always find different type of soaps at Marshall's and TJ Maxx and stuff like that. And I'm pretty sure these kind of soaps are gonna be more friendly to you beginner sellers who are gated in a lot of stuff. So definitely go scan hand soap and just all these just random items that you probably wouldn't have scanned. You probably would have just walked past them. So yes, hand soap sells. Um, you can also find a lot of hand soap from major brands that are being discontinued. And if you can get your hands on a lot of them, you can make some good money. So never sleep on the hand soap. Next item is going to be a little toy, a little dog toy called the Ugly S2 Dalmatian electronic pet dog. It makes all these weird noises, but I sourced these from a local um, discount grocery store and I paid $6 per unit and sold about, I don't know, maybe 10, 12 of these for $28 to $35, um, just ranging on what my repricer was pricing them at. Um, but still a good 10 to $15 profit per unit. And I was able to get my hands on a decent amount. They're a little bit of a slower seller. I sold about 12 of them over like six to eight weeks. But again, that profit margin was a lot higher. It was about a 200% return on investment. So I'm willing to kind of sell through slower on products like that to get a higher return. Um, but definitely guys, check your local, go on Google and type in like, discount grocery stores or discount stores near me. Um, there's just tons of like local stores in your area that will probably have a lot of cheap, cheap products and they're not gonna be in other states. Um, so it's a lot less competitive products, um, which makes for great sales on Amazon because you don't have price tankers. Next product is going to be another product I sourced at Walmart. I don't really source at Walmart a whole lot, but I'm going in there to buy something, you know, I'm addicted, I gotta check all the, the aisles and stuff and see if I can make some profits. So I picked up these little Barbie things. They weren't any bigger than like this. $2 each, sold them for 12 to $14. Um, so again, only making like a $6 profit, but $2 turning into a $6 profit. I'll take that, they sold quickly. I got about six of them and why not? I was in the store, right? Next is going to be a High Sierra backpack I sourced at Marshall's. I picked this up for $12 and sold it for 60. I've personally sold a lot of High Sierra um, backpacks like since I've been selling on Amazon. I have heard of people getting, you know, kind of letters from them. Um, potential IP complaints from them. So definitely if you're gonna look to sell High Sierra, I'd kind of weigh your odds. I've been selling them and never had a problem, um, but I've definitely heard of some horror stories. So depends what your risk tolerant is. I mean, it's probably just better to stay away from them, but $12 source for these High Sierra backpacks, I'm pretty sure you can make a profit on another platform regardless. Um, but $12 sold for 60, made a good probably like 30, $35 profit. So that was, I, I got a bunch of different High Sierra backpacks when um, after the holidays. So I've been selling a ton of them lately, but this one in particular was super, super good. Next is going to be a Rubbermaid um, product. If you guys didn't know, like little kitchen storage things, all different brands, not just Rubbermaid. I sell probably five or six brands that I find at the stores. Um, like Walmart, all the stuff that are replenishable and I sell them every single month. I have been selling them every single month for quite a while. So definitely guys, Tupperware in stores, you can definitely either get it on clearance or it's just so cheap in store, but for some reason people pay more online. So definitely don't skip out on Tupperware, but this particular one I paid seven bucks, sold it for $21.99. So after fees, I made about five, six, seven dollars profit. Um, but I've been selling, you know, 10 to 20 of these a month. I always just pick them up when I'm at the store. Um, so another great sale. Next is going to be a really, really good home run product. And it is this Dessange California Blonde Illuminating System Shampoo. Um, I picked these up again at a local discount grocery store for $2.99. I was able to get my hand on about 35 or 40 of them. I'd have to check. And I sold through all of them within 30 days 
for $19.97. So I was actually making almost like a $10 profit. So I made a good like three, 400 bucks just off of this simple shampoo. Again, guys, this new shampoo that girls use, I guess, to get their hair more blonde, I've found tons of different brands that sell really good from like Marshalls and all these different stores. So definitely check out these like blonde illuminating shampoos if you ever see that at one of these stores, scan it. Um, there's a potential to make profit there. It's super high end type of shampoo. I don't know about this brand, but um, there was no one really on the listing. So I bought them all, sent them in and sold them. Next is going to be kind of one of my favorite type of categories to sell in even with retail arbitrage and that is going to be the grocery category. And this particular item I sold is called Miracle Tea. I got it from TJ Maxx for $2.99 and I sold them for $14.97. I was able to get my hand on about six or seven of them. Um, again, guys, grocery is great because one, you can find a ton of replens at Walmart. And the key to really doing good in the grocery category if you're doing retail arbitrage in specific is a lot of the items you scan at like let's say Target, Walmart that are grocery related items. They're not gonna be making you a profit if you just sell one, but if you manually search all these different grocery products, take the time, go to Walmart for a few hours, start manually searching a bunch of these different products like cake mix, seasonings, hot sauces, wing sauces, all these different products, what you'll find is if there's listings where people have created two pack, three packs, or maybe there's a listing with like three different flavorings where you can't sell that product individually to make a profit if you're paying full price at these Walmarts or whatever, but if you're bundling them together, you can create margin um, due to, let's say you're selling a seasoning for seven bucks, right? Or you can sell a three pack of that seasoning for $18.99, right? At a $7 product, the fees are mostly gonna eat into your profit, whereas if you're selling a three pack at 18 bucks, the fees plus your profit margin built in, you're able to actually create a profit. So. Don't just go into these Walmarts looking for replens. I recommend to manually search all these products up. Look if there's bundles, variations, um, variety packs, just things of that nature. You have to get creative because everyone's going to scan the same stuff at these stores. So if you really want to build a replenishable business where you can kind of go get the same products quite often, you have to think outside of the box. So that's a quick tip for you guys. But guys, those are the 10 items I sold. As you can see, we range from toys to video games to grocery items, selling tea to shampoos, um, just Tupperware. So I wanted to give you guys a variety of products. I sell whatever I can and make a profit on. I recommend you guys do the same. Don't limit yourself to just one particular type of products, guys, especially if you're doing retail arbitrage sell whatever you possibly can because retail arbitrage kind of is a tough game um, if you're kind of just focusing, hey, I wanna sell only video games, I only wanna sell this. But guys, that is pretty much gonna wrap it up for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed, showed you guys some pretty cool little products I've been selling recently. Um, let me know what are some kind of cool products you have sold in the past that you know, you, you've never even heard of because I've definitely come across some random weird products that I've sold in the past. Um, so if you don't mind sharing below, don't, don't tell us if you're selling them, but stuff you sold in the past that was just random strange stuff. Let's see what you guys have sold down in the comments below. And also guys, if you appreciate me putting out content for you guys, please smash that like button for the YouTube algorithm. And one last thing, if you're new to the channel, don't forget to hit that subscribe button and I'll see you guys on the next one.